Okay, so as a YouTuber, as a content creator, a computer is my main tool. I need something that is reliable, powerful, and keeps up with my creativity. Now, does the MacBook Pro 16 inch deliver? Well, let's talk about it. Hello, my name is Tom and I'm a minimalist. I live in Sweden and today I wanted to talk about my new MacBook Pro 16 inch from late 2019. I wanna explain why I picked this over the 13 inch MacBook. I wanna tell you what I like about this machine, what I don't like about it and some other things that I'm getting used to. Okay, so my previous computer was the MacBook Pro 13 Retina from late 2013. And although it was getting a bit slow and the battery was getting worse and the screen lamination started to come off, I actually still like it. But I was interested in using a MacBook for serious 4K editing. After all, I'm a YouTuber. And so I told myself, Tom, just this once, let's go crazy on this purchase. So, why did I wait so long to get a new MacBook Pro? Well, there are actually three reasons for that. Most importantly, the new butterfly keyboard just seemed worse. The touch bar seemed like a gimmick and didn't really do that much. And the removal of the magnetic cable. And now, finally, they fixed, well, at least the keyboard. So whenever I buy a new computer, the process of collecting information is important, especially when you buy a Mac, you pay a lot for it. But since this is an investment for many years to come, at least for me, I carefully select the right computer for me. There are pros and cons with every computer on this planet. If it's portable, you usually suffer in performance and you have to weigh the cons with the pros to make the right purchasing decision. I'm hoping that that by watching this video you will feel more confident in your next computer purchase. Now truth be told I'm a bit of a tech geek and recovering gearhead. I know quite a bit about how computers work and I know what different computers are good for. Now my main purpose of this computer is to edit videos in Final Cut Pro 10. That is my favorite program in the whole world apart from notes. If I was gonna play games, I would definitely not buy a MacBook. I would buy a PC, no doubt. Now, truth be told, there are two extremes in the Mac computers. There is the ultra portable MacBook Air and the powerhouse Mac Pro, or even the iMac Pro. And as I mentioned before, you have to compromise either way. So I was trying for the ultimate compromise, a really powerful yet big MacBook laptop. So I decided to get the MacBook Pro 16 inch. I picked the space gray version and I gotta say, I really like it. I think that the 13 inch MacBook Pro is the perfect laptop size. This is my wife's laptop, it's 13 inch and as you can see, the difference is quite substantial. This one is lighter, it's smaller, it's definitely more portable. But I just didn't feel that I needed to be that portable because I usually don't take my laptop outside my house. The 16 inch MacBook Pro is portable enough to move from kitchen to living room or studio to bathroom. Weight wise, it's two kilograms and it's not that much heavier than my old MacBook Pro 13 inch, which was about 1.57 kilograms. I went with the base configuration that's the Intel i7 with six cores, 2.6 gigahertz, 60 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and 512 gigabytes of insanely fast SSD. It's a real shame that it costs so much to upgrade this machine when you purchase it. For instance, storage. I would have preferred to have at least one terabyte, but it's freakishly expensive. So I picked 512 gigabytes and I think it will be sufficient. Since I will be at home, I have no problem using an external SSD for bigger editing projects. Getting the i9 eight core CPU didn't seem to give that much edge according to several tests I've read online. Same with upgrading the GPU. 
I wouldn't recommend it unless you plan to edit 8K videos. I've often been a huge fan of 4K and higher resolutions, but I have drawn a magical line with 4K. I just don't see the benefits of 8K over 4K. So for my use, I think that this machine will be sufficient to my 4K editing needs. Okay, and I also wanted to talk a little bit about the features on this thing. I don't wanna show you Geekbench results or export tests. There are plenty of those on YouTube. Instead, I want to share my experience working with this machine. Just browsing the web, typing and regular use, it feels a lot snappier than my old 2013 model. But in all honesty, buying any new MacBook today would feel snappier. The main purpose for this MacBook will be video editing. And in this area, the MacBook really shines. The 6-core CPU and a dedicated GPU really make a difference. When doing heavy editing, the fans, they do kick in and the MacBook does make a lot of noise. But this is a good thing. It means the CPU doesn't clock down as much and you get more performance from your expensive machine. So the noise is fine, I don't mind it. I usually use AirPods or noise-canceling headphones. I really like the Retina screen on my 2013 MacBook Pro, and I wasn't expecting much to change, but I was wrong. True Tone makes the color adjust to the room just like my iPhone, and I really like this feature. The resolution is almost 4K, and I rarely feel the need to connect it to a bigger monitor. And also, I gotta mention, I really like the bezels on this model. They are super thin. I really like the keyboard, feels just like my MacBook 13, or even a bit better. I've tested the butterfly keyboard on my wife's MacBook, and I would have gotten used to it, but it still would have felt like a step down, in my opinion. The Touch ID is awesome. It really makes the process of logging in on your computer a lot faster. And Apple Pay works great too. But of course, as a minimalist, I don't purchase stuff online. Battery life is fine. Apple says 10 hours, I would say maybe seven or eight, depending on what you do on it. If you're gonna edit videos, you might as well just plug in. If you're gonna browse the web, then you got yourself at least eight hours of browsing. So four USB-C ports, that's great. I can't imagine ever needing more than two, but I'm not gonna complain, four is great. What I do mind though is the missing card reader, just like every reviewer has pointed out already. It's a shame and I'm sorry Apple, but I think you're just being stubborn on this one. Now, the good news for me is that my camera, the Panasonic Lumix GH5, has USB-C connection. So it's very simple to just use the charging cable to transfer video files from my GH5 to my MacBook Pro. And with my iPhone, thanks to AirDrop, it's really easy to transfer videos and pictures to my MacBook. I noticed that they removed the SD card reader, but kept the headphone jack. I wish they did it the other way around, since I use wireless headphones. P.S. I absolutely refuse to use a dongle. The speakers on this thing are amazing. Not extremely loud, but very clear, and I really like them. Now, I usually don't record videos on a web camera, but since the microphones on this MacBook Pro are so amazing, it's a real shame that the webcam, which is only 720p, is not as good. I mean, it would have been a really sweet setup for vlogging if you really think about it. Well, maybe next time. Apple, if you're listening, think about this it would be so awesome. Okay, so I've used the touch bar for a while and I've sort of gotten used to it. There are moments where it is actually practical when recording the screen with QuickTime or when listening to Spotify. And I tried to use it in Final Cut Pro, I really did, but honestly, it just doesn't do that much for my editing. It's nice to see the timeline on the thin bar, but I do that on the screen anyway, so it doesn't really save space, time, or anything. My biggest complaint about the touch bar is that it's just not effective in adjusting the volume. I preferred the buttons. 
Now, I think that the sliding is the wrong way to go about it. I would have preferred two virtual buttons for volume up and volume down. Okay, so I really enjoy this trackpad. It's bigger than ever, and I think that Apple really does amazing trackpads. I know that there are a lot of people who can't use the trackpad when editing videos in Final Cut Pro. They need a real mouse. Good luck finding one with USB-C. But me personally, I can edit easily on the trackpad, and I just love when you can pinch, zoom, or slide back and forth with the simple gestures of your fingers. Okay, so just to sum it up, what I liked about it, it's got wicked monster performance. Seriously, this thing is fast. The Magic Keyboard, it's great. I have no complaints whatsoever. Touch ID is actually very practical and I'm really glad that they have it on this model. The screen is great and I really like the True Tone. The speakers are really, really good and I'm glad that they focused so much on making them this good. And what I don't like about it, so the price is just insane, especially when you're purchasing and you're upgrading it. Since you can't upgrade it later on, it feels really sad that you have to invest so much money when you're purchasing this computer. The touch bar is useful at times, but I really miss the volume buttons. The SD card reader missing, I refuse to get a dongle, but I found a way to work around it, so I'm gonna be okay. I miss the magnetic cable, but I figure as a minimalist, using USB-C for other things is more practical. Okay, so I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please put it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Take care and until next time. Well, just take care. Take care of yourselves. Oh, you're still here. That's great. I'm trying something new today. I guess I'm gonna call it a behind the scenes vlog. And I think I'm gonna try to shoot one at the end of each video where I give a more personal update on my life. And I got the idea from Craig Adams and Jenna Marbles where they have like a scripted video at first for people who are just, you know, searching for stuff. Like in this instance, people will search for a MacBook Pro review and they'll find it, but maybe they are not interested in hearing about, you know, personal development and stuff like that that I wanna talk about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like a scripted first part of every video and at the end of the video I'm gonna do like an unscripted behind the scenes vlog. So we'll try it, we'll see how it goes. I think that the people who are actually gonna stick around to listen to this part are the people who actually subscribe and are interested to know about my life and stuff like that. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so fun fact about this particular video that I shot today, it's actually like the third time that I'm recording it. And the reason is the first time I recorded it, I was just not pleased. It just felt like a tech gadget review. And I'm sort of trying to get away from that. I want to have more like a, what kind of tech does a minimalist have? You know, not just, oh, this is the brand new MacBook Pro and this is the features that it has. I didn't want to geek it out on this one. I do that sometimes on another channel. That's more for tech. But on this channel, I just felt like I wanted to focus more on how I use it and give it a more of a personal feel to it. And I hope that people appreciate that. I don't know how enthusiastic this video felt. I'm not trying to, you know, sell this computer or anything like that, um, but I did recently get it and that's why it may sound like I feel very enthusiastic. I think it's something you have to get used to. I mean, you can pretty much see it on YouTube. I don't think it's that uncommon. I think a lot of YouTubers, when they review stuff, they just recently got it, so they have a lot of energy, you know. And also, a lot of times, YouTubers have Amazon affiliate links, so you can't really always trust it. You sort of have to take every review with a grain of salt. But as excited as I am, I have to say, that this machine performs really, really well. I've already edited a couple of videos on this machine and I just really enjoy using it. And originally I was sort of thinking that I was gonna get like an iMac 
and maybe a 13-inch MacBook Pro, but I'm sort of starting to lean more towards the idea of minimizing the amount of tech gadgets that I have. And I have a lot, you know, and it's not that I feel that there's anything wrong with having too many gadgets. It's just that I feel that me personally, I just want to have less stuff in my life. Sometimes when you have less stuff, you have to make some compromises, but I just feel so good when I have little stuff, you know, I, I, I feel more affection for the stuff that I have when I have less of them. You know what I mean? Like if, if this iPhone was the only thing that I had, it would be my pr most prized possession. But since I have this computer and this computer, and you know, I have a Mac mini, different tech gadgets, different cameras, it's difficult to appreciate what you have. I'm gonna try to make an effort this year to minimizing the amount of tech stuff that I have. Okay, so it's April, 2020. We still have that thing we're not supposed to talk about, this state in the world. I enjoy listening to a lot of YouTubers that talk about their experience during this interesting time. And I noticed that there are a lot of people who just are like climbing the walls. They just, they can't deal with it. It's interesting to me, and I've mentioned this before, that as an introvert, like really nothing has changed for me. And I feel good. I love the solitude. I love working from home. It feels good to be me at the moment, if that makes sense. And I guess I just want to say that I think that a lot of people who don't enjoy solitude and introversion, maybe this is a good opportunity to do that. You know, and maybe this is a good opportunity to use that free time. We are all sort of stuck at home right now. It's a global event, it's really interesting. And I think that it's a good idea to sort of try to use that time for something practical. For instance, meditation could be something practical. Usually a lot of people don't have time to meditate. Suddenly a lot of people have that time. A lot of people are trying to start a business, but they don't have the time. Maybe now is the time to start planning and start, you know, sketching up ideas and stuff like that. A lot of people, they don't know what they want to do with their lives and they have no time to figure it out. Maybe this is a good opportunity to plan the rest of your life. So for me personally, I don't know, maybe I've reached a certain age, you know, getting near 40 that I don't really, it's gonna sound so boring, like I don't have plans, but my life is pretty fixed in the sense that I do have goals and ambitions, but I pretty much already know what I want and I'm sort of already steering towards my goals. I'm like 100% committed to my goals and dreams and I'm working on them, making one video per week, just enjoying the process, just enjoying my time. And it feels really, really good, actually. Now, I know there are a lot of people who suffer because of all of this. Who knows, I might even get the thing that I'm not supposed to talk about, and it's probably gonna be rough. But in a way, and I don't know, maybe it's just me trying to look at the bright side of life, but I'm sort of trying to enjoying the pause in my life right now. I'm enjoying that the tempo has suddenly been lowered and I have time to think about things. And um, that feels really good to me, actually. I don't know, I have this new MacBook Pro. I feel kind of guilty because it's super expensive. This is something that I'm not actually purchasing with my own money. This is something that I'm purchasing with money that I've made on YouTube through other channels. So I'm gonna use this time and I'm gonna use this machine to get closer to my dreams. And um, yeah, I'm really excited right now. I have a lot of project. I have the podcast, I have the website. I'm trying to be more active on Instagram and I'm trying to grow as a storyteller on YouTube. So it's really exciting times and I'm just really enjoying myself at the moment. So yeah, I would really like to know how you are passing time, how you are using this time, how you are feeling, it would be just fun to know. I think you can agree that we are all kind of isolated at the moment. So thank goodness for internet. Thank goodness for YouTube, where we get to communicate with each other worldwide. So yeah, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed this video, especially the vlog part after the, the real video. And um, if you think I should continue making videos like this, let me know in the comment section below. 
Okay, that's all I had for today. Take care.